It's a monster. It's got a huge spine. It's got ugly big eyes. But it's tiny, and you wouldn't think that such a tiny little thing could cause so much damage in an ecosystem. They'd get caught in the eyelets, they'd get caught in the reel. There was more and more spiny water feet collecting on my line. The average person probably wouldn't think that's just a little, little speck in the water, but uh, these things grow and reproduce by the millions, and, uh, and they're really getting to be a problem. Even some of the bass, as I would catch them, I'd reel them up, they were spitting this goo out. They destroy the bottom of the food chain and they eat uh, microorganisms that minnows survive on and uh, other fish species need. Loons, uh, turtles, uh, all sorts of other critters that need minnows. Finding water fleet destroys the food chain. Recreational fishing uh, means a lot of money to the economy. Uh, there are a lot of commercial fishing boats that sail out of Grand Marais, and without a good trout population, those businesses don't exist. Spiny water flea builds up even. They're just real small. They'll build up on there and, and make them dirty so the fish can see the nets. You actually have to clean your nets. Commercial fishing and, and sport fishing is a, it's a big thing around here, you know, especially in the summer months with the tourists around. Uh, uh, brings in a lot of dollars there. There are a lot of organizations and individuals that have taken up the call to do citizen science and citizen monitoring. And you can then prioritize those lakes for prevention efforts and trying to stop them from hitchhiking to another body of water. There are times when you go out sampling for a spiny water flea and that's all you will catch. And you know that something else used to live there. They were first found in Lake Ontario in 1982. And it took about a decade for them to get into inland lakes here on the western end of the Great Lakes in Minnesota. It took about another decade for them to really start spreading throughout lakes. And the reason that they started to spread is because they ended up in popular fishing lakes and were then able to hitchhike on fishing equipment from one lake to another. One of the last of the border lakes, my family's had a little shack, hunting, fishing shack up there for 65 years. And it's one of the most beautiful lakes. Now has spiny water flea. It's just another example of something that was really pristine and, and kind of primeval. It's changed. And just to know that it's somehow tainted now, it sickens me to, to know that. My typical day at Voyagers National Park is spent roving at the boat launches and on the hiking trails. And I'll pass it on to your boat if you want to see what it looks like. Take a look at that. Getting out there and educating our visitors about how we can prevent exotic species from spreading into our parks. It's really difficult, nearly impossible, to remove the species once it is infested. On the water, I just think about the beautiful scenery that we can enjoy here. It's everything 
balancing each other. It's the fish, it's the wildlife, it's everything that makes up the park. And if we have problems with exotic species, it only takes one creature to disrupt that balance and affect the natural ecosystem that so many visitors come up here to enjoy. We want to maintain the integrity of the entire park. It isn't just the concern of the anglers or the, the people out boating or people on hiking trails. It's a concern for everybody.